When I first started my blog, one of the first things that I uploaded was a blog post called The Heartbreak Manifesto that uh, turned out to be the blog post with the most hits. So it seems like there are a lot of Filipinos out there that need some help with uh, dealing with their heartbreaks. And the reason why I actually wrote this, this blog post, which was published in Meg Magazine, which doesn't exist now, is because when I was going through heartbreak, I was Googling like how to get over it, of course, like any other millennial, you Google everything. And I couldn't find an article that I, that I trusted that really applied to like, what I think I need to do for myself to get over this gut-wrenching heartbreak. I wrote it in 2011. In the comment section of this blog post, the responses were pretty overwhelming. I'm just gonna read some stuff out real quick and then I'm going to give my 2019 updated version of my heartbreak manifesto. Not just for women who are in their 30s like me, but really for everyone, even men. This applies to you. In December 18, 2014 from Hannah, this is what I needed to read, succumb and internalize. I'm right in the middle of studying when I decided to take a five minute break and have a quick browse over your blog again. Bianca, I don't think you can fully comprehend how much it brings tears to my eyes every time I read an inspiring blog post like this. Aww. And how it literally opens my eyes to improve myself and strive with passion. See, that's why I do these blog posts, because there will be at least one person out there who can relate to what I'm saying. Wanderluster in 2015 said, I was there too in the same situation you were. Wow, after my gut-wrenching heartache, I traveled, met people, learned new things, made new experiences. Now I'm in Africa. I truly love myself. I love my awesome life. And I appreciate all those who love me, stood by me more than ever. It's amazing how breakups tend to be like slingshots. They shoot us to somewhere better than we were. Generally, I think um, people should be extremely grateful when they're going through a heartbreak, whether it's like loss of a loved one, loss of a career, anything. That's, that's, that's happened to me also before I lost a career, as you know. Just kidding. Because when you go through heartbreak, that's usually the fuel that's gonna propel you to where you actually need to be. That's like, that one push that you need to like go to the gym, work harder, uh, meet new people. So if you are going through a heartbreak right now, congratulations. You're just about to be a better person. And I'm gonna help you, I hope. I just wanna help everyone. So I think to get over a heartbreak, let's make it more general, huh? Let's say the, the, the cause of your heartbreak could be like you got laid off, your contract didn't get renewed or something like that, whatever. Or, you know, some guy or some girl decided to dump you, which has happened to me a lot. I have to say first, before and anything else, I am like expert level of getting over a heartbreak because it has happened to me so many times. In my history of dating, I have only broken up with a person once and every single time, everyone has broken up with me. Nothing's wrong with me, I swear to God. Everything was wrong with them. <laughs> okay, first thing I think that's really important when you're heartbroken is to take a look at your personal finance. Of course, money isn't everything, but money is empowering. If you are financially equipped to take care of yourself, I can really say that the heartbreak will do you really well because you will have the money to travel, whether it's big or small, even if you're just traveling to La Union on a bus, whatever, you need money for that. If you want to work on your self-improvement, like you want to take classes, enroll in a gym, that costs money. So of course you want to like eat and buy stuff, right? Go going back to the whole uh, assessing your personal finance. When we go through heartaches, one way actually to get over it is to work, 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 work. So if you are not in a good financial position, you now have the motivation to work very hard and you have the free time because you don't have a boyfriend or a girlfriend. So yeah. Next thing that I would say you need to work on obviously is your self-awareness. Okay, And um, in order for you to really get to know yourself, you have to spend time alone. Your favorite person has to be you. You can only start caring for yourself and loving yourself if you are happy, you're okay with yourself. Like be comfortable spending time alone. Write in a journal and you know, process all of your emotions day to day. Like how am I feeling? What's making me happy? What's making me sad? And in this process of journaling daily and talking to yourself on a piece of paper, you'll be able to find out which areas of your life you need to improve on. Do you need to spend more time working out? Do you need to read more? Do you want to learn something new? Basically, how do you want to make yourself better so you can make the person that broke up with you feel like poop?
Next, prune and polish yourself. This is my favorite advice that I have been giving all of my friends. Pruning, you know when you, when you prune a plant, you kind of like trim it and shape it to whatever shape you want it to be. And then if you polish something, you, you, you make it shine. You make it like really clean and presentable. So think of yourself as a project that you need to prune, cut out all the unnecessary people, habits, toxic environment, whatever that you don't need, and just focus on the things that make you happy and whole and help you improve yourself. And that will that is what will polish you and I think turn you into the person that you need to be to make you attractive for the next line of men or women that are gonna come up to your doorstep and wanna date you. Prepare yourself for that. Mental health. Obviously, when you are going through a heartbreak, your mental health gets really affected, right? You're depressed, you're crying a lot, you're emotionally eating, which is all okay. Be, be depressed, cry, eat your feelings. I do it all the time. I just pay for it the next day by like eating a salad and water. But I do highly recommend crying. Just cry as much as you can. Just play like a sad song, your favorite sad song. Watch a sad movie. Cry and stuff your face until you don't want to do it anymore. Just get it out of your system. And then I think you should see a psychiatrist, a psychologist, a therapist, a counselor, whatever you want to call it. But talk to a professional that can help you process your emotions. I was in therapy for um, a year collectively, and this is why I am probably the way I am today because I um, would speak to a professional about everything that was bothering me who helped me understand my core issues. We did memory work and dream work. For the memory work, I had to log down all my memories from when I was a child, and then we figured out why I behave the way I do and how I can correct it. Yes, the heartbreak is what led me to the therapy, but in therapy, I found out there was there was there were more issues than the pain that I felt from being broken up with and my grandmother passing away. So I just really want to remove the stigma about uh, seeking professional help when it comes to your mental health because we go to a doctor for our skin, for our teeth, for everything else that has to do with health. Before, uh, before, when you say that you're seeing a therapist or you, you need to see one, there was always like a stigma like, oh my God, is she going crazy or something? No, it's actually like, you should pat, pat yourself on the back for saying that I think there's something wrong with me. I don't want to just keep talking to my friends about it and I want to get better. Don't be ashamed if you think you need to see a therapist. You should do it. So even if you don't do like long-term therapy and it's just like a one, two or three time thing, I think it's still worth doing because you have to know what your boundaries are. So what working with um, a psychologist, is this a psychologist or psychiatrist or therapist? I don't even know the proper term for it, but work on identifying what your boundaries are for relationships, how strongly you feel about certain topics even, because this is going to help you with the next relationships that you're going to develop, because obviously you want a, a healthy one. You want one that's not toxic. And normally things get toxic in a relationship if you allow your boundaries to get crossed. So, yeah. <laughs> no, my God. There are no, there's, there's no rule book for, for boundaries. You really have to like look inward and, and identify them for yourself. Last but not the least, this has always helped me through all of my heartbreak, which you will see on my blog. That's why I travel so much. I would like to share with you guys this like extreme travel thing that I did before, which you will also see on my blog. In 2015, I told my family and my friends and everyone that I'm spending Christmas and New Year's by myself in Bali. I don't eat pray love. I eat pray love, I swear to God. I spent 15 days by myself in Bali and I literally went home cured. Being by myself every day, waking up, like walking to a coffee shop, reading a book, talking to a stranger, doing a yoga class. Um, everything was also on a budget, so I didn't spend a lot of money. Before I've traveled around North America for like six weeks by myself, I was just sleeping on my friend's sofas visiting my family, things like that. But just like separating myself from my usual surroundings and stepping outside my comfort zone. And well, to me, it was extreme already to go to Bali for 15 days by myself. But yes, it, it fixed me. So I think that should be like the culminating activity of your breakup therapy for yourself is prepare for like this really, really good solo trip where you know exactly where you're going. So be safe. 
uh, plan your trip, don't overspend on it, and kind of have like some kind of idea of what you're gonna do on a on a daily basis that's good for you. Meaning, don't choose you know the hottest club and get drunk by yourself. That's not what I mean. Like just have a vague idea of what what you want to be doing on your your solo trip. And how is my heart now? Oh.